Today we're going to be talking about how to decide whether a sequence is increasing, decreasing, or not monotonic, and we're also going to be talking a little bit about how to determine whether or not a sequence is bounded. Now in this particular problem, we've been given the sequence a sub n is equal to 1 divided by the quantity 2n plus 3. Now the first thing we need to decide is whether or not this sequence is increasing, decreasing, or not monotonic. If a sequence is always increasing, or if it's always decreasing, then it can also be considered monotonic, because monotonic just means that it's always moving in the same direction, that from beginning to end, it's always eventually going to be increasing or decreasing. If it increases and then decreases and then increases and it doesn't really go in a particular direction, then the sequence can be called not monotonic. In other words, it doesn't always move in the same direction. But if it's either increasing or decreasing, then it's also monotonic. So we just need to figure out whether or not this sequence is always increasing or decreasing. Now, the easiest way maybe to do this, or just to get a, a quick feel for whether or not it's always increasing or decreasing, is to start listing out the terms of the sequence. So we could start with n equals 1, and we could list out the terms of the sequence. And if we did that, we'd plug in 1 for n, and we'd get 1 divided by 2 plus 3, or 1 fifth. If we plug in n equals 2, we'll get 1 over 2 times 2 is 4, plus 3 is 7, we'd get 1 seventh. If we plug in 3, you'll see that we get 2 times 3 is 6, plus 3 is 9, so we end up with 1 ninth. And you can already start to see a pattern, 5, 7, 9, if we keep going, we'll get 1 11th, 1 13th, etc. Right, so we can already get a general feel for the terms of our sequence. And what we can see from these terms is that this sequence is decreasing, right? Because the denominator continues to get larger and larger, the term in general, the sequence in general, will be decreasing. 1 fifth is greater than 1 seventh, 1 seventh is greater than 1 ninth, 1 ninth is greater than 1 eleventh, so the sequence is decreasing, and that gives us a good gut feel. And as we continue to plug in values for n, the sequence will continue to decrease. So we can say that a sub n is decreasing, and because it's decreasing, we can also say, therefore, that it's monotonic right, because it's always going to be decreasing, it's always going in the same direction, therefore we can call it monotonic. If we had found that it was increasing everywhere, we could have called it monotonic as well. The only time we can't call it monotonic is if it's increasing, then decreasing, then increasing, and it never really picks one direction. Now one thing to note about a monotonic sequence that I want to point out before we go further is that monotonic doesn't necessarily mean that every single term is always less than or, or greater than the previous term. For example, this sequence is decreasing. So let's take an example of that, right? If we were to, to plot this sequence on an xy coordinate plane, right? Let's say we get here 1 fifth, and then we get 1 seventh, and then 1 ninth, and then 1 eleventh, like this, and the sequence is decreasing always, right? So that's a monotonic sequence because it's always going to be decreasing like this. But if we have a sequence, and we can do this in a different color, if we have a sequence that looks like this, and it has little hills in it like this, right? You might think that this sequence is not monotonic, when in fact it is a monotonic sequence. Even though the sequence increases at certain points, eventually it's always going to decrease. If I continue along and I keep plugging in greater and greater values of n, eventually this sequence is always going to decrease and, you know, the end point, if there was one, is going to be less than where I started. So the sequence will eventually decrease and that is a monotonic sequence. The only time we can't say it's a monotonic sequence or Here's an example of a non-monotonic sequence. If we were to have a sequence that looked like this, where it increased and then decreased and then increased and then decreased, and you would never really be able to say that it was always increasing or always decreasing, right? Because we were seeing greater and greater values on the high side here and lower and lower values on the low side here. So this would be a non-monotonic sequence. But I just wanted to point out that even if you have ups and downs like this, it can still be a monotonic sequence as long as over time there's a general discernible direction. So this sequence is decreasing, it's also monotonic. We can tell that by looking at the terms of the sequence, but how can we prove it? Well, if you want to prove that the sequence is decreasing, one way you can do it is by finding the 
a sub n plus 1 term of the sequence, and then showing that the a sub n plus 1 term is always less than the a sub n term. So in this particular case, if I want to find a sub n plus 1, all I need to do is in place of n, wherever I have n in my original sequence, I'm instead going to insert n plus 1. So I'm going to plug n plus 1 in there. So I'll get 1 over 2 times n plus 1 plus 3. And when I simplify this, I get 1 over 2n. Here I get 2. 2 times 1 is 2. And then I add 3 to that and I get 5. So I get 2n plus 5. That's my a sub n plus 1 term. So if I want to show, if I want to prove that this is always decreasing because I found that it's decreasing, if I want to prove it, I want to show that a sub n plus 1 is always less than or equal to a sub n, because if that's true, then each of my subsequent terms is less than the previous one, right? 1 7th is less than 1 5th, 1 9th is less than 1 7th, 1 11th is less than 1 9th, etc., and that proves that it's decreasing. So what I can do is substitute in here my terms, I get 1 over 2n plus 5, less than or equal to 1 over 2n plus 3. Now, I don't really need anything more to show that this is true, because no matter what value of n I plug into this inequality, this 1 over 2n plus 5 value is always going to be less than the 1 over 2n plus 3 value. So for example, at n equals 1, if I plug 1 into this 1 over 2n plus 5, I'll get 2 times 1, which is 2, plus 5 is 7, so I get 1 7th. That's going to be less than or equal to, I plug in 1 here, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5, 1 fifth. You can see obviously here that this makes sense because this is our n equals 1 term in our a sub n series, right, which we got here, and then the n plus 1 term is 1 seventh, and that's less than 1 fifth, which is what we just found there. If we do n equals 2, what we'll get is 1 ninth less than or equal to 1 seventh, and it just shows that our a sub n plus 1 value is always going to be less than or equal to our a sub n value. So this is the inequality that proves that that's true. This inequality, of course, only holds true for values of n greater than or equal to 1. Obviously, we never tested it for a value of n equals 0 or a negative value of n. We're saying that our series starts at the value n equals 1. So this is true for values of n greater than or equal to 1. Now when we want to talk about whether or not the sequence is bounded, what we want to do is see if we can find the largest value of the sequence and the smallest value of the sequence, if it has one. So just to illustrate this point, if we go back to the sketches that we drew of these curves here, right? If we take this curve that um, was not monotonic, right, that increased and decreased and never went in a particular direction, if I look at the highest values of this sequence, right, this is a high point, this is a high point, this is a high point, and you can see we would continue to find high points. And when we're talking about the largest value of that sequence, the largest value is always going to keep increasing. As our sequence goes out to the right here, it's always going to keep getting larger and larger and larger as we go. Same thing with the bottom here. The lowest value is at this point, then it's at this point, then it's at this lower point, then this lower point, and the, the lowest value, the smallest value of the sequence is going to continue to get lower and lower and lower as we go out to the right. This sequence is not bounded. It doesn't have a high value or a low value. When we talk about a bounded sequence, what we're looking for is a value that caps the sequence above or below. For example, if we go look at this, this green sequence that we drew earlier, this one here, as you can see, this sequence never goes higher then this value right here, whatever this y value is, whatever this line is, it never goes higher because it's always going to be decreasing. Now, this sequence would be bounded above because it's never ever going to be higher than this point right here. It's not bounded below because it's going to keep falling and falling and falling and falling with no apparent end in sight. So that sequence would not be bounded below, it only would be bounded above. This sequence here that we drew in white, our original drawing here, this one, this could be considered bounded above and below depending on the sequence, right? If it never goes higher than this value right here, if this is its highest point, 
And if it's also dropping off, if the, if the slope is leveling out and it's never going to go below, let's say, this value right here, then it can also be considered bounded below and it would be like the limit as the sequence goes out here to infinity. In our particular sequence, we can almost tell just by looking at it, right? This one-fifth value is the largest value that the sequence will ever obtain and because the sequence is always decreasing, we know that there's never going to be a value larger than one-fifth. So our sequence is bounded above. When you can say that a particular value is the largest value the sequence will ever obtain, right? One-fifth is the largest value that our sequence will ever obtain. Then you can say that the sequence is bounded above, and in this particular case, that a sub n will always be less than or equal to one-fifth, right? It will never be greater than this value. Now, in terms of a sequence being bounded below, you're looking for a value below which the sequence will never go. In our case, we can continue expanding the sequence, right? We'll get 1 15th, 1 17th, etc. And what we can see is that the value of each term will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but it will always be a positive value. Never will any of these terms become a negative term. So what we can say is that our sequence is also bounded below, bounded below, by the line y equals zero or the x-axis because our sequence will never be negative. So we can say that the sequence is bounded below and that a sub n will always be greater than zero. Together we could write these like this. We could say zero will always be less than a sub n, which will always be less than or equal to one-fifth. Therefore, this is a bounded sequence because it's bounded both above and below.